Hi, good to see you again. One of the things I like to do with my time is play music. And that little bit of Mozart you hear at the beginning of uh, these videos, uh, that's me and three friends playing in a clarinet quartet. I was playing an orchestra and last night I was playing some jazz with a little trio. If you want to hear us play, if you go to Google and just uh, find my homepage, type my name, Ian Witten, and uh, you'll uh, get me here and uh, every time you visit this page, I'll play you a tune. And if you refresh the page, I'll play you another tune. Yeah, that's what I do. Anyway, that's not what we're here for. We're here to talk about uh, Lesson 2.6, uh, which is uh, about cross-validation results. So we learned about cross-validation in the last lesson. And I said that cross-validation was a better way of evaluating your machine learning algorithm, evaluating your classifier, than repeated holdout, than repeating the holdout method. Cross-validation does things 10 times. You can use holdouts to do things uh, 10 times. But cross-validation is a better way of doing things. So uh, let's just do a little experiment here. I'm going to start up Weka and open the diabetes data set. Uh, here it is, diabetes.r. And the baseline accuracy, which 0R gives me. That's the default classifier, by the way, rules 0R. If I just run that, well, it'll evaluate it using cross-validation. Actually, for a true baseline, I should just use a training set. That'll just look at the percentage of the chances of getting a correct result if we simply guess the most likely class. In this case, 65.1%. Okay, that's the baseline accuracy. That's the first thing you should do with any data set. Then we're going to look at J48, which is down here under trees. There it is, and uh, I'm going to evaluate it with tenfold cross validation. And it takes just a second to do that. I get a result of, let me just make this window bigger, 73, 73.8%. And we can change the random number seed like we did before. That's the default is 1, the random number seed of 2, run it again, and I get 75%, do it again, change it to say 3, and choose anything I want of course, uh, run it again, and I get 75.5%. Uh, so uh, these are the numbers I get on this slide, with uh, 10 different random number seeds. So those are the same numbers on this slide in the right hand column. The 10 values I got, 73.8, 75, 75.5, and so on. And I can calculate the mean, the sample mean, which for that right-hand column is 74.5, and the sample standard deviation, which is 0 0.9, using just the same formulas that we used before. Before we used these formulas for the holdout method, we repeated the holdout 10 times. And uh, these are the results you get on this data set if you repeat holdout that is using 90% for training and 10% for testing, which is, of course, what we're doing with cross-validation, tenfold cross-validation. And I would get those results there, and if I uh, average those, I get a mean of 74.8, which is satisfactorily close to 74.5. But I get a larger standard deviation, quite a lot larger, standard deviation of 4.5, 4.6, as opposed to 0 0.9 with cross-validation. Now, you might be asking yourself why use tenfold cross validation. With Weka, we can use twentyfold cross validation or anything. We just set the number beside the number of folds here, beside the cross validation uh, box to whatever we want. So we could use twentyfold cross validation. What that would do is be to divide the data set into 20 equal parts and repeat 20 times, take one part out, train on the other 95% of the data set and then do it a 21st time on the whole data set. So why 10? Why not 20? Well, it's a good question, really, and there's not a very good answer. Um, we want to, uh, we, we'd like to use quite a lot of data for training, because in the final analysis, we're going to use a 
entire data set for training. Uh, so uh, it would be good to use, if we're using tenfold cross-validation, then we're using 90% of the data set for training. Maybe it would be a little better to use 95% of the data set for training with 20-fold cross-validation. On the other hand, we want to make sure that what we evaluate on is a valid statistical sample. So in general, it's not a necessarily a good idea to use a large number of folds with cross-validation. Also, of course, 20-fold cross-validation will take twice as long as 10-fold cross-validation. So the upshot is that there isn't a really good answer to this question, but the standard thing to do is to use 10-fold cross-validation, and that's why it's Weka's default. So we've shown in this lesson that cross-validation really is better than repeated holdout. Remember, on the last slide, we find that we got about the same mean for repeated holdouts for cross-validation, but we got a much smaller variance for cross-validation. So we know that the evaluation in, of this uh, machine learning method, J48, on this data set, diabetes, uh, we get 74.5% accuracy, probably somewhere between 73.5% and 75.5%. That is actually uh, substantially larger than the baseline, so J48 is doing something for us better than the baseline. Cross-validation reduces the variance of the estimate. Okay, that's the end of this class, so off you go and do the uh, activity, and uh, I'll see you at the next class. Bye for now.